الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد our journey with the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in this blessed month of Ramadan for our class 30 themes from 30 verses of the Quran on the 28th day of Ramadan inshallah ta'ala we will read a verse from Surah Al-Ankabut and Alhamdulillah again, brothers and sisters, this month, the month of the Qur'an, Alhamdulillah, I'm sure the brothers and the sisters through their individual study as well have benefited immensely from reading the Qur'an, contemplating upon it, trying to implement it. And we find in the Qur'an, Alhamdulillah, treasures that are priceless and this is another one and the verse is Surah Al-Ankabut verse number 2 but inshallah ta'ala we will read also verse number 3 the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal أَحَسِبَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ that the people think that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be trialed, they will not be tested. Allah Azza wa said in the next verse وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And we tested and trialed those who came before them to make it known those who are truthful from them and to make it known those who are lying. And that Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah has some beautiful words about these ayat. And Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah has some beautiful words about these verses in the Quran that I will share with you. He said, فَذَكَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ فِي هَذِي السُّورَةِ أَنَّهُ لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَمْتَحِنَ خَلْقَهُ وَيَفْتِنَهُمْ لِيَتَبَيَّنَ الصَّادِقْ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِ وَالْمُؤْمِنْ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرُهُ وَيَعْبُدُهُ مِمَّنْ يَكْفُرُهُ وَيُعْرِدْ عَنْهُ وَيَعْبُدُ غَيْرَهُ He said Allah mentioned in this verse that it is a must, it is inevitable for him to test and trial his servant so that the truthful can be known and made manifest from the liar and so that the believer can be known from the disbeliever. And so that the one that thanks Allah and worships Him alone can be known from the one that is ungrateful to Him and turns away from Him and worships other than Him. Naam. Brothers and sisters, life is a test. We are going to be tested. Allah Azza informs us in these ayat, Alif Lam Mim, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Do the people think that they will be left to say we believe, and they will not be trialed, they will not be tested? Brothers and sisters, life is a test. تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Allah created life and death. Allah سبحانه وتعالى created life 
And he created death to try you as who is going to be best in actions. Naam, life is a test. We are all going to be tested. Naam, labud. Look what Ibn al-Qayyim said. Every single human being is going to be tested, is going to be trialed. It's inescapable. There's going to be some test in life. And there's wisdom behind this. Naam, the infinite wisdom of Allah Azza wa necessitates this. It requires it to make it manifest. The believer from the disbeliever. The truthful from the liar. The one who shows gratitude to Allah Azza wa and worships him alone to the one who is ungrateful and worships other than him. To make things clear. That is why Imam Al-Ajurri rahimahullah a beautiful statement that he said in a sharia that should be written in gold he said فَإِنَّ الْفِتْنَةَ يَفْتَدِحُ عِنْدَهَا خَلْقٌ كَثِيرٌ When fitna, when trials and tribulation occur many people are exposed. It brings out the reality of the people. Trials and tests. You know what a person is made out of. When they are trialed and when they are tested that is when you can differentiate between the one who Allah is blessed with firmness from the one that's shaky, the one that is weak at the knees, the one that is thankful to Allah, and the one that is ungrateful, the one that has understanding in the religion, and the one that is ignorant. وَذَكَرَ أَحْوَالَ الْمُمْتَحَنِينَ فِي الْعَاجِلِ وَالْآجِلِ And Allah mentioned the conditions of those who are going to be tested in this world and in the hereafter. وَذَكَرَ أَئِمَّةَ الْمُمْتَحَنِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَهُمَ الرُّسُلُ وَأَتْبَاعُهُمْ وَعَاقِبَةُ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَا سَارُوا إِلَيْهِ And Allah mentioned the imams of those who are going to be tested. Yes. Who are the imams of those who are going to be tested, Nasir? No. Wallah musta'an kayf. Naam, Allah. Yes, the prophets, the messengers, the imams, the leaders of those who are going to be tested are the messengers and their followers. And Allah Azza likewise He mentioned Subhana, the outcome and the conclusion of their affairs. The hadith, the authentic hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when the Prophet وسلم, was asked. Who are the people that are trialed the most? And he said, Al-Anbiya, the Prophets. Thumma Al-Amthal, Fal Amthal. And then those who imitate them the most. And then those who imitate them the most. Hatta yubtal al-abd ala qadri deeni. Until the servant will be tested depending upon the strength of their religion. A person will be tested, yes. When Allah tests us with something, we can get over it. Know that for sure. If Allah puts a test in your way, you have the ability to get over it. And if Allah loves the people, He tests them. Allah really loves the messengers. And Allah tested them. And they were patient. And they were victorious. And Allah gave them victory in this world. And Allah gave them victory in the Akhirah. There is not a story of the prophets except that you can read if we look to the first messenger. Who was who? Nuh, Nam, Noah, alayhi salatu was salam. How Allah Azza subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him with the ark. And those who turned away were destroyed with the floods. Al aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Success. The final outcome will always be for the pious in this world and in the Akhirah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, in Mecca, how the Mushrikun, the polytheists, harassed him and they insulted him and they maligned his character and physically they tried to harm him. But look how Allah Azza raised him, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Look how Allah Azza wa Jalla raised him and humiliated his enemies. Because the final outcome, success, is always for the pious. Every 
everyone will be tested. If Allah loves the servant, yes, the believer will be tested. And the believer is patient. The kafir will be tested. Ibn al Qaymi continued, he said, وَافْتَتَحَ بِالْإِنْكَارِ عَلَى مَنْ يَحْسَبُ أَنُّ يَتَخَلَّسْ مِنَ الْإِمْتِحَانِ وَالْفِتْنَةِ فِي هَذِي الدَّعْبِ إِذَا الدَّعَ الْإِيمَانِ وَأَنَّ حِكْمَتَهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَشَأْنَهُ فِي خَلْقِهِ يَأْبَ ذَلِكِ Allah Azza wa Jal started by mentioning started by criticizing the one who thinks that they're going to escape trial and test in this world if they claim faith yes Allah Azza wa Jal he said, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Did the people think that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be trialed, they will not be tested? And that his wisdom, subhanahu, as it relates to the creation, it rejects that. Naam, the wisdom of Allah necessitates that they will be tested. وَأَخْبَرَ عَنْ سِرِّ هَذِي الْفِتْنَةِ وَالْمِحْنَةِ And Allah informed us in these verses the reason, the secret behind this test. Why are we tested? نعم. We are tested as Allah has informed us. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ and surely we tested those who came before you. Yes, the people were tested. Allah Azza wa Jalla He said, and certainly we tested those who came before you. Like you are going to be tested. We're all going to be tested <coughs> to make manifest, so that Allah Azza wa Jalla makes known those who are truthful, and He makes it known those who are lying. May Allah bless us to be amongst the truthful. And Allah Azza wa Jalla informed us the secret behind this test and this trial is to clarify the truthful from the liar. Wal mu'min al kafir, the believer from the disbeliever. Yes, Allah tests us. Now, even in our time, Ikhwan, people, how many people claim that they understood a da'wah to Salafiyya, the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah? How many people claim to understand it? When Allah sent the tests and tests that you would have thought that anyone who studied the books like the three fundamental principles, the book of Tawheed, the fundamentals of the Sunnah of Imam Ahmad, and other than that, from the basic books of knowledge, you would have thought that anyone who studied those books would have been able to recognize the fitna that affected us when people came from Medina graduates and they said Tawheed will not change our society. You would have expected every Muslim to understand that this is misguidance. But many people sadly, illa man rahimallah, were confused and they went along with the wave. People were tried and tested. Allah is going to test us. When we learn, Allah is going to test us. Are we going to submit and surrender to what we learn? Or are we going to go with the people that we like or with personalities? Or are we going to take the easy option? Are we going to go always with that which is easier? That which conforms with the desires of the people? And Ibn Al-Qayyim will discuss that, Ikhwan. I hope I have time to get to it. And then he makes a beautiful point. He said, وَهُوَ سُبْحَانَهُ Allah knows all of this before it happens. Yes, because Allah is Al-Alim, the All-Knowing. Allah Azza wa knows who is the truthful. And Allah Azza wa knows who is the liar. Allah Azza wa knows who is the believer. Allah Azza wa knows who is the kafir. Allah Azza wa knows all things. Nothing is hidden from His knowledge. Nothing is hidden from Allah. وَلَكِنْ اِقْتَضَ عَدْلُهُ وَحَمْدُهُ أَنَّهُ لَا يَجْزِ الْعِبَادِ بِمَجَرَّدِ عِلْمِهِ فِيهِمْ SubhanAllah, look at this ikhwan. But the justice of Allah Azza wa Jal, it requires that Allah does not recompense the servants just in accordance to his knowledge about them. Bal 
بِمَعْلُومِهِ إِذَا وَجِدَ وَتَحَقَّقْ Rather, Allah Azza wa Jalla will recompense the servants for what is manifest and known from your actions. Allah knows what's going to happen. But Allah Azza wa Jalla will recompense you based upon what is known from your actions, what occurs and what transpires. That's from the justice of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And no one has an excuse. وَالْفِتْنَةَ هِيَ الَّتِي أَظْهَرَتُهُ The fitna, the test, and the tribulation, and the trials will make all of this apparent. وَأَخْرَجَتْهُ إِلَى الْوُجُودِ And it will make it manifest into existence. فَحِينَ إِذِنْ And at that point, then a person will be recompensed for their actions, for what actually occurred. Then Allah Azza wa Jal criticizes. ثُمَّ أَنْكَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ عَلَى مَنْ لَمْ يَلْتَزِمْ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَمُتَابَعَةَ رُسُلِي خَوْفَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَالْمِحْنَةِ الَّتِي يُمْتَحِنُ بِهَا رُسُلُهُ وَتْبَاعُهُمْ Then Allah criticizes the one who does not hold firmly to faith and the one who does not follow his messengers fearing fitna, tribulation, fearing a test, fearing a trial that the messengers are tested with and their followers. Because such a person thinks and believes that if they turn away from Iman, faith, and turn away from believing in his messengers, that they're going to be safe and escape the fitna. They're going to escape trials and tests. And then Ibn al-Qayyim said, فَإِنَّ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَالْمِحْنَةِ وَالْعَذَابِ أَعْظَمُ وَأَشَّكُ مِمَّا فَرَّفْ عَنْهُ In reality, brothers and sisters, the one who runs away from fitna in this way, and they turn away from faith, and they do not follow the messengers, Ibn al-Qayyim said, in front of them is a trial and a test and a punishment that is more severe and that is worse than that which they're running away from. فَإِنَّ الْمُكَلَّفِينَ بَعْدَ إِرْسَالِ الرُّسُلْ إِلَيْهِمْ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنَ Because the people who are accountable for their actions, meaning everyone who has intellect and has reached puberty, there is only two options. One, إِمَّا أَنْ يَقُولَ أَحَدُهُمْ آمَنْتِ Either a person says, I believe. وَإِمَّا أَنْ لَا يَقُولْ بَلْ يَسْتَمِرُ عَلَى سَيْئَاتِ Or the second option, the person is going to refuse to say, I believe. And they're going to continue upon their evil deeds. Look, so there's two groups of people. A group of people, they're going to say, I believe. I believe in Allah and I believe in the messengers. Or a group of people, they're going to say, I don't believe. And they continue upon their evil. Look what Ibn al-Qayyim said next. He said, فَمَنْ قَالَ آمَنَّا امْتَحَنَهُ الرَّبْ تَعَالَ وَابْتَلَاهُ لِتَتَحَقَّقَ بِالْإِيمَانِ حُجَّةَ إِيمَانِهِ وَثَبَاتِ عَلَيْهِ If a person says they believe, Allah is going to test them. Their Lord will test them and trial them for proof of the faith that they claim and their firmness upon it. So Allah is going to test us. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tested in life. You may be tested as it relates to your religion. You may be tested as it relates to your health. You may be tested as it relates to your wife. You may be tested as it relates to your husband. You may be tested as it relates to your children. You may be tested as it relates to your parents. In life, we are going to be tested. You may be tested as it relates to your brothers and your sisters. We are going to be tested. Life is a test. Allah tests the believer after they say, I believe, to establish the proof of the faith that they claim and their firmness upon it. And to establish that it is not only faith at good times and faith during times of ease alone. Rather, it is faith that is firm at times of blessings and times of difficulty and calamities. Allah is going to test us. May Allah bless us all to be firm. Amen. Then he said, the second group of people, he said, and the one who does not believe, the one who refuses to believe, then they should never think that they're going to escape their Lord and this test is going to pass them. Rather, they are under the power of Allah Azza wa Jal and their forelock is in his hand. And this person, the disbeliever, 
their trial and their test will be greater and more severe than the one who says, I believe. فَمَنْ آمَنَ بِهِ وَبِرُسُلِهِ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يُبْتَلَ مِنْ أَعْدَائِهِ وَأَعْدَائِ رُسُلِهِ بِمَا يُؤْلِمُهُ وَيَشُقَ عَلَيْهِ The one who believes in Allah and believes in his messengers, they will be trialed and tested from their enemies and the enemies of the messengers with that which will cause them pain and it may be difficult for them for a short period of time. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِهِ وَبِرُسُلِهِ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يُعَاقِبَهُ فَيَحْصُلُ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَلَمِ وَالْمَشَقَّةِ أَضْعَافَ أَلَمِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the one who doesn't believe in Allah and doesn't believe in his messengers, then it is inevitable, it is a must that Allah will punish them with a pain and a difficulty that is much greater, many times more than the believers. So we understand that, right? The believer may experience some pain. Inshallah, we'll differentiate between the two later on. The disbeliever, his pain is going to be even more severe because not only is it going to be in this world, if they die upon kufr, it's going to be for eternity in the hereafter. May Allah protect us from that. So then Ibn Al-Qayyim continues explaining the ayah. The ayat when Allah Azza wa said, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasib al Nasu an Yutraku, an Yakulu Amanna wa Humla Yuftanun, Wala Kadfatan al Ladina min Kablihim, Wala Kadfatan al Ladina min Kablihim, Falaya Alamanna Allahu al Ladina Sadaku, Wala Alamanna al Kadibin. Do the people believe that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be tested and they will not be trialed? Surely we tested those who came before them so that Allah Azzawajal made known those who are truthful and Allah Azzawajal made known those who are lying. Ibn Al-Qayyim continued, he said, فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ حُصُولِ الْأَلَمْ لِكُلِّ نَفْسِ مُؤْمِنَةٍ وَأَوْكَافِرًا He said, every soul will taste pain. The believing soul and the disbelieving soul. لَكِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ يَحْصُلَ لَهُ الْأَلَمُ فِي الدُّنْيَا أَشَدَّ ثُمَّ يَنْقَتِعُ He said, the believer, yes, their pain may be a bit more severe in this world for a short period of time. However, it ceases, it goes away. And it's followed by pleasure, the greatest type of pleasure. And that is why, Ikhwan, na'am, whoever leaves something for Allah, Allah Azzawajal will replace it with that which is better. It's a promise from Allah. When you leave something sincerely for Allah, solely for Allah, Nam, Allah will replace it with that which is better. But there may be a period at the beginning of pain. That's the differentiate between the one who is sincere and honest and the one who is pretending. But in the long term, it will become the greatest form of pleasure. والكافر, the disbeliever, يحصل له اللذة والسرور ابتداء ثم ينقطع. They may experience some pleasure initially and some happiness is going to disappear before their very eyes and it's followed by the most severe pain and difficulty. Why do you think, Ikhwan, so many of them have to take drugs, substance abuse? Look at the opioid problem. We see it in this city. Look at how many people are addicted to opioids. And it's all walks of life. Don't just think it's the homeless. Even the very rich and affluent addicted to these things. But they can hide it better. That's no life. Ibn Al-Qaim said the disbeliever, they may attain some pleasure and happiness initially, but then it disappears, it ceases and it's followed by the greatest pain and regret. And that's in the world, Ikhwan. What about the akhirah, the hereafter? It's a shad. This is the condition of those who follow their desires. They may enjoy some pleasure initially. However, it is followed by nothing but pains. Depending upon the extent of the lust and the desires that they experienced. He said, Those who stay away from these lusts, they may feel some pain initially. Because of their absence, ibtida'an. That's only at the beginning. However, after that initial pain, there comes pleasure and happiness 
and delight depending on the extent of their patience and how much they abandon these things. That is why, look, Ikhwan, and I've mentioned it before, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. He said, What? Rabbi sijnu ahabu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayya. He said, My Lord, prison is more beloved to me from what they're inviting me to. He preferred prison over a beautiful woman that was trying to seduce him. He preferred prison. And look how Allah Azza wa Jal elevated him. Look how Allah Azza wa Jal elevated him and chose him. Alayhi salatu was salam. Ibn al Qaymi continues, Ikhwan, and I'll summarize because we're running out of time. He said, Fad alam, pain and pleasure is inevitable for every human being. Lakin al farqa bayn al ajil al munqati al yaseer wal ajil al daim al azim. He said, pain and pleasure is inevitable for every human being, every person. But there is a big difference between a slight worldly pain that is temporary, نعم, and a pain that is eternal, meaning in the hereafter, and is great and severe. That is why intelligence, intelligence and contemplating upon the outcomes Habidukumullah and the results of things would necessitate what? Naam, intelligence, it would necessitate and reflection that we think about the outcome. Are we going to choose that are we going to prefer the pain that is going to be eternal, meaning in the akhir and the hereafter? Or are we going to take the pain that may be slight, but it's only temporary? Any intelligent person is going to say, I'm going to take that slight pain. It's like pricking your finger. It's like pricking your finger. You prick your finger, it's like you do the test for diabetes. It doesn't even hurt after a while. If you're not accustomed to it, nam. It may be worrying for a person because you see blood, but it doesn't even hurt. That slight moment of pain, obviously any intelligent person is going to prefer that over eternal pain. In the hereafter, may Allah protect us all from that. Amen. Then Ibn al-Qayyim closes. And Ikhwan, subhanAllah, again, these words are very deep and very pertinent. He said, from another angle, whoever thinks that they're going to escape all pain in this world, then this is the falsest assumption. Because humans, by the way that Allah Azza created them, they're going to experience delight, and pleasure and happiness and sadness and delight and anxiety and this is from two angles from the angle of the way that Allah has created them from their innate disposition and he said from another angle وَمِن جَهَةِ بَنِي جِنْسِهِ also as it relates to other human beings you are going to feel pain as it relates to the people that you interact with those who are around you listen to this listen to this and this will inshallah ta'ala Pre present to us. This will, inshallah, present to us a solution for our lives. He said, Humans are madani, bitaba. Humans innately, we like to live and be around other people. We like to live around others in civilization. La yumkin wa yaish wahda. For the majority of people, they cannot live alone. Bad la yaish illa ma'ahum. Rather, we have to live with people. That's the way Allah created us. Us and them, meaning you as an individual and the people, they have things that they are pleased by. They have pleasures and they have goals. And our goals and their goals, they may vary and differ and oppose one another. It's not possible that our goals and our pleasures are exactly the same as everyone else. بَلْ إِذَا حَسَنْ مِنْهَا الشَّيْءِ فَاتَ مِنْهَا فَاتَ مِنْهَا الشَّيْءِ If we agree on some things, we're going to disagree on other things. بَلْ إِذَا حَسَنَ مِنْهَا الشَّيْءِ فَاتَ مِنْهَا الشَّيْءِ فَهُوَ يُرِي مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يُوَافِقُوهُ عَلَى مَطَالِبِهِ وَإِرَادَتِهِ وَهُمْ يُرِيدُونَ مِنْهُ ذَلِكِ We, we want for others to agree with our wishes and our goals, our objectives. And the people, they want you to agree with their wishes and their goals, right? 
Is living in society, you as an individual, you want the people to agree with your wishes and what you have aspirations for. The people around you also, they want you to agree with their wishes and their goals and their objectives. Ibn al-Qayyim said, فَإِنْ وَافَقَهُمْ حَسَلَ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَلَمِ وَالْمَشَقَّةِ بِحَسَبِ مَا فَاتَهُ مِنْ إِرَادَتِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يُوَافِقْهُمْ آذَوْهُ وَعَدَّبُ وَسَعُوا فِي تَعْطِيلِ مُرَادَاتِهِ He said, if you agree with the people against your wishes and your objectives, you're going to experience some pain and difficulty because that opposes what you want as a human being. Now, you will experience pain depending upon how much of your wishes you gave up on or you relinquished. Now, if you don't agree with the people, they're going to harm you and they're going to try punish you and they're going to strive to deprive you of your wishes. They're going to strive to rob you of your wishes. كَمَا لَمْ يُوَافِقُمْ عَلَى مُرَادَاتِهِمْ فَيَحْسُلْ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَلَمْ وَالتَّعْذِيبِ بِحَسَبِ ذَلِكِ And also, if you don't agree with the people, you will experience pain, نعم, depending upon the extent of that. They're going to try and punish you, and they're going to try and inflict pain upon you. Listen to what he said next. He said, in life, in reality, a person will experience pain, difficulty, trouble, whether he agrees with the people or opposes them, especially if he agrees with them in affairs that he knows that is based upon false belief. So if you know something is based upon a false belief, but you just go along with the flow, like for example, everyone is saying every religion, it leads to the same path. We're all going to paradise. We all worship the same deity. We're all going to Jannah. Whatever you are, whatever you worship. And you go along with that because you want an easy life. The pain is going to be intolerable. Ibn al-Qayyim said, in reality a person experiences pain, difficulty, trouble, whether he agrees with the people or opposes them. Especially if he agrees with them in affairs where he knows that it is based upon false beliefs and corrupt wishes and actions that have harmful consequences. He said agreeing with them involves the greater pain and opposing them involves in some pain. Yes, you agree with them, it's going to be greater torment. You sold out, you're not true to Allah, you're not true to yourself. You won't be able to look in the mirror. Your conscience is going to eat you up. You're going to not be able to be honest with your own self, let alone anyone else. May Allah protect us from that. And there are some people like that, Ikhwan. They sold out and they know that they sold out. May Allah protect us all from that. And that is why we gave the khutbah, who changed on the Eid? Ibn al-Qaymi said, فَلَعَقَلْ وَالدِّينُ وَالْمُرُوءَ وَالْعِلْمِ تَأْمُرُ بِاحْتِمَالْ أَخَفَ الْأَلَمَيْنِ تَخَلُّسًا مِنْ أَشَدِّهِمَا وَبِإِثَارًا مُنْقَطِعْ مِنْهَا لِيَنْجُوَ مِنَ الدَّائِمُ الْمُسْتَمِرُ He said, the intellect, the religion, honor, meaning dignity and knowledge, all of these things command the individual to bear the lesser of the two pains, to escape the greater of them, preferring the temporary pain to escape the greater of the two, which is eternal. May Allah protect us from that. Let's try and finish this, Ikhwan. And this is for us in our city and every Muslim on the face of the earth. He said, فَمَنْ كَانَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ مِنَ الظَّلَمَ عَلَى ظُلْمِهِمْ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَهْوَاءِ وَالْبِدَعَ عَلَى أَهْوَائِهِمْ وَبِدَعِهِمْ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْفُجُورِ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ عَلَى فُجُورِهِمْ وَالشَّهَوَاتِهِمْ لِيَتَخَلَّسْ بِمَظَاهَرَتِهِمْ مِنْ أَلَمِ أَذَاهُمْ أَصَابَهُ مِنْ أَلَمِ الْمُوَافَقَةِ لَهُمْ عَاجِلَ وَآجِلَ أَضْعَافَ أَضْعَافَ مَا فَرَّ مِنْ Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahu Allah, he said Therefore, whoever aids the oppressors in their oppression or the people of desires and innovation in their desires and innovation or the sinners and people of immorality, their immoral lusts in their wickedness, then they will be afflicted with the pain of agreeing with them in this life and the next with a pain that is more severe many times than what they are trying to flee from. So those people, Ikhwan, that aid the oppressors because they're trying to escape their pain, or they aid the people of Bid'ah. Look, how many people do we find aiding the people of Bid'ah? Look what Ibn al-Qaim says about the one who aids the people of Bid'ah upon the Bid'ah. Those people, the, those who do it, like Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, he said, Rahimahullah, no one aids an innovator except from hypocrisy. 
And the hypocrisy many times, it involves this. A salary, or some position, or some station. Ibn al-Qayyim said, whoever nam, agrees with the people of innovation, the people of immorality, the people of indecency, whoever aids the oppressors to escape the pain of opposing them, then the pain that they will get in this life and the next will be more severe many times from what they are fleeing from. May Allah protect us from that. And he said the way of Allah, the way that Allah decrees in his creation that he will punish them. Naam. However, if a person is patient in the pain of opposing them and staying away from them, then Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace that with pleasure in the short term and the long term that will surpass the pleasure of agreeing with them in their falsehood many times. And the sunnah of Allah, the way of Allah that he decrees for the creation is that he will raise the people who have patience upon the truth and he will lower the, those who oppose them depending upon the patience of the individual and their piety and their dependence in Allah and their sincerity. He said, If it is a must that we experience pain and torment, then let it be for Allah and seeking the pleasure of Allah and following his messengers. This is more deserving and this is most beneficial than agreeing with the pleasure of the people and trying to please their wishes. We ask Allah to bless us to die upon Kitab and Sunnah. Wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka